Hey, thanks for being back in my channel. Uh, this is part two of the Linux video that I started last week. I'm finally getting around to finishing this video. So I hope you follow part one when we went from uh, installing uh, Debian Linux onto your machine. Um, obviously, this is not going to be a virtual machine thing. This is mostly for uh, native installation, like I mentioned in the first video. So if you get this far and you've installed uh, Debian, then congratulations. Now you have it ready. Uh, so what do you do from this point? Well, first of all, I want to set up my distribution how I like it. So move everything around. And before I start, don't forget to share and like this video. You know, drop me a comment below, hit like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it really helps my channel. Uh, I'm just over 5,000 subscri subscribers, so it really helps when you comment. It helps the algorithm. It does take you two seconds and it really helps the channel. So, uh, since we left off in the last video, I had to reinstall Linux again. I ran into an issue where because of it, I enabled uh, encryption on this uh, on this drive uh, and then I tried to install NVIDIA drivers. It broke the entire system. Obviously, this is an issue related to this particular system. It won't affect you in any way unless you have an NVIDIA card and you install Debian you have to uh, jump through some hoops uh, for native. There's, there is no really native support for, I mean, there is, there is native support for NVIDIA, but in, there isn't really. I mean, NVIDIA did release drivers, but it's just, if you have ena encryption enabled, then it causes an issue with the, uh, with the boot manager. So just leave it out. Uh, uh, hopefully if you have NVIDIA, maybe try installing uh, Mint. Mint, uh, Linux Mint has a native support for NVIDIA. It's just a simple one-click install and it will work, no problem. But I prefer Debian, so I will run Debian on my machine. But uh, you know, you could have chosen whatever distribution works for you. So let's jump in right into it. So uh, I'm gonna speed through this quickly. I'm just gonna do a, a time-lapse of me setting it up just the way I like it. So I have screen recording going, uh, I'm using OBS. Uh, so let's just go through this very fast. And we'll come back to the screen once I'm done setting it up the way I like it. So I'm done setting up my Linux machine. As you can see, I've installed just a few minimal things, a dark theme and uh, some applets here on top. You can see here on the top, I wanna to see my temperature of my, uh, my system and and uh, CPU usage and all these things. But uh, pretty much this is I'm done. Uh, also on the bottom here, I have the log. So the system log, I like to view what's happening with the computer. So uh, most, most of the machines, my Linux machines have this on the bottom. Now that we're done, let's get a few things out of the way. For installation of my packages, I'm gonna be using Synaptics. Now Synaptics will not work in GNOME. I'm sure there's a workaround, but uh, I can't be bothered because I use Cinnamon as my desktop environment, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. If you were to run Synaptics in GNOME, it's not gonna launch. It's just gonna say you can only run it without no, uh, without uh, root pri privileges. I haven't tried running it through Terminal on there. If you go to Terminal and GNOME and then run it with, uh, with uh, root privileges, I, I'm sure it might work, but since I don't use GNOME, I'm not a big fan of GNOME. I used to be, I'm not anymore. I prefer uh, Cinnamon. Then we're gonna stick with that. To launch Synaptic, just to go go to the menu, type in Syn, and then you'll see it here. You gotta put in your um, root password. Um, so once you have it running, uh, it's gonna update the packages. Now there's a few things you have to do inside of Synaptics uh, to get access to everything. So you go into repositories and make sure uh, to enable D DFSG compatible software and then non DFSG compatible software. These two will not be enabled, so you should enable these. Um, other than that, you can, if you need to add any other uh, repositories, you can add here. Uh, make sure this is enabled. Uh, everything else is good. You can reload the packages quickly here. Even though I didn't make any changes, but if you make the changes, you're gonna have to reload your packages here. Uh, the next thing is under preferences. This will be disabled. Make sure you enable consider uh, recommended packages as dependencies and clicking on the status icon uh, uh, marks the most uh, likely action. If you don't do this, if you don't check mark this, what's gonna happen is when you select packages here on the on the left, it's gonna ask you to confirm every single time. It's annoying. So just make sure you do that. And from this point, uh, apply this. From this point, uh, we can start installing our packages. So like I said, I haven't installed anything that I don't, that, that uh, that's forensic, uh, specific for forensics yet. Uh, I just installed my modifications for the look and feel of the of the distribution. So uh, as of right now, this distribution is very light because if you, I've only installed what I need. Um, this is why I choose um, Debian over over um, Ubuntu or or Mint or whatever distribution you like because it's so it's so lightweight. So you can only install the specific things you need now. That also means that if you're installing uh, from source or if you if you're compiling your your own packages. 
it will complain about missing libraries and dependencies you will have to install them one by one unlike with uh, mint or ubuntu you're gonna have everything already pre-installed well, almost everything can't have everything i'll be crazy but uh, you're gonna have most of the things pre-installed which is nice um so if, if you if you prefer mint ubuntu just go that route that's fine it's it's it's, it's your system you you can do whatever you like um so let's start with a few simple things so definitely i want um dcfldd so here we go we're gonna check mark dcfldd we'll get to the forensic extras after uh what else do we need actually let me um let me uh, start a, a document here so i'm gonna link uh in the description of this video i'm gonna link all the packages that i have installed uh, obviously you feel more than welcome to explore uh synaptics and see what else is out there there's tons and tons of packages so we installed dcfldd so dcfldd is a uh it's a version of dd which is a disk imager on on linux that has capabilities of hashing the uh whatever you're imaging I'm sure you've seen me use it on this channel and in other videos. Okay. Another one that we need is DC3DD. This is just another version of DCFLDD. So there, there, there it is. Um, you can see that Forensic All is also listed here. Now, if I was to choose Forensic All, it would install all these tools for me. Uh, so if you, if you don't really want to waste time with uh, installing individual packages, um, then you can definitely install Forensic All. But we'll, we'll get to it after. Let's just go one by one. Uh, next one that we need is some sort of hex editor. So definitely uh, one of the, the hex editors to use is G-Hex. There's just so many that you can install. So here's G-Hex. And now you see a uh, window popped up. So it's asking you, do you, want to, do you want to make additional changes? So this specific uh, program will require uh, this library, which is uh, libgtk-hex. GT, uh, we're gonna apply, yes. Yeah. So now you see it's marked uh, another dependency. And uh, let's also install a command line XSD. Oh, well, it's already selected for us. I guess it's part of. Um, let's see if it's installed. XSD. Yeah, so we have XSD installed. Yeah, so with XXD, you can view hex in here. So uh, you have this already in terminal if you need to use it. Also, I just noticed something. The time on the system is not right. Uh, let's just quickly fix this. Uh, we are apparently in Asia. Another great tool to have is EXIF2. EXIF2 is a program that lets uh, view metadata from uh, specific files. So I just quickly hit apply here. So I'm going to install the few packages that we, that we selected. So we can see here now. Uh, in, in the terminal window, you can see how the, we're installing a few of the application we have. now. we don't want to leave, leave synaptics yet. So now we see EXIF2 is installed. So if you want to view metadata of a specific file, you type an EXIF2. And uh, let's see if we can view a file here. So here we're viewing uh, EXIF data on this uh, video capture file that we did, so we can see everything. Now, if you had images, you, there, you could see a lot, a lot more information, uh, GPS coordinates and uh, camera type and all these information. So EXIF tool, super, super important. So these are just a few that you need. So the next one, um, let's just now install like a bunch of different tools. So um, if you're searching for forensic in uh, um, synaptics you will find there's quite a bit of different different uh, tools to install so let's just go one by one here autopsy definitely a tool that you need uh, it's part of the sleuth kit and um, this is a free forensic tool that lets you uh, examine discs images you name it great tool free tool um, if you want to try brute forcing encrypted volumes, you can install that. I don't need this on this machine. Definitely need uh, cool. It's to um, generate word lists. Very useful. Let's keep coming down here on the list. I should probably be writing this down. Uh, disk type, definitely important. I won't be able to go over all these tools that I'm installing because this video will be way too long. 
definitely disc locker uh, to let you read and write a uh, bit locker volumes and you can you can dial it down to exactly what you need you don't have to install everything I'm installing you can just install what you need and then as, as the time goes you can install more it's, it's really it's really just the beauty of, of Linux uh, building for forensic work uh, this is always good to have this is just for me you don't have to install that um, exif probe another exif viewer uh, ext4 magic i haven't used that but uh, definitely worth having in your machine this is for recovered deleted files from ext ext3 ext4 partition keep in mind that's almost impossible a lot of times because just the way uh, ext4 or linux file system is structured fc crack zip uh password record for zip archives always good to have foremost so foremost so foremost is also also a great uh Data recovery tool plus is also a great uh, forensic tool. Definitely install it. It's good to have forensic artifacts. You know, let's put that in. So now, here you see forensics dash all. If you were to select this, this will install a lot of packages that I'm already selecting. I am one selected because I want to go per specific uh, program and show you one by one. Uh, but when I'm done, I'm going to go back here and select all. So we're going to skip these for now. You have uh, Galera, Internet Explorer, Cookie Forensic, and, and an Analyst Tour. Never used it because uh, I use Axiom, but you know what? Uh, people still use IE. Why not add it? Scenography program for GIF images. GPART, Guess PC Disk Partition Table, Find Those Partitions. Uh, GRR, Rapid Response of Instant Response Framework. I don't think I've used this, uh, but you know what? Why not have this as well? Guy Major Forensic Imaging Tool based on QT. I've talked about uh, Guy Major in my other video and the free forensic tools. If you haven't seen that, those videos, you should definitely watch it. I'm going to link the whole playlist uh, just above here so you can, so you can see it. Definitely worth watching. It's going to take you some time to go through it all. See, uh, so by setting Guy Major, you can see a lot of libraries and uh, dependencies that uh, need to be installed, including smart monitor tools. These, this one right here. Uh, is to view smart data on hard drives. Uh, let's keep going down the list here. Hash deep, recursively compute hash some of. You know, I'm gonna select. Uh, I'm gonna take screenshots later and um, and add it to this list here because uh, otherwise this game is gonna be too long. So hex compare. You to compare identify binary files. Definitely, definitely useful. Uh, I'm sure you can find uh, where you can apply this specific tool. Hex edit another text viewer. A text ed a hex editor definitely worth having. Uh, definitely want AFF4 support because uh, I'm I'm using AFF4 more and more often nowadays. Safe copy another program that helps you copy files that are damaged disks. Scalpel very 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 powerful tool. You can um, build your own uh, headers and then you can recover files from uh, Slack space. I've used it many many times. Uh, Scrounge NTFS for NTFS file system definitely worth getting. Simple hex editor with Picasso style interface, yeah, with Pico style. So if you use Pico or Nano in, in, uh, in, uh, on the Mac or, or Linux, uh, you might be used, uh, familiar with this interface. Definitely what worth getting. What else we got here? Test disk, definitely, definitely get test disk. This is another data recovery tool. This is more for cyber stuff or net, net forensics and things of that nature. You can grab that anyway. Veneto forensic tool for examine thumbs.db. You know what? Always useful. Always useful. And also, don't forget the volatility. I talked about it in my other video. Uh, this is for, for grabbing uh, uh, memory dumps. Uh, and then win reg fs for fuse file system. Also, a wipe. Very useful tool if you want to wipe a hard drive. I the way I wipe drives, I usually use DD or DD Rescue. I will take the slash dev zero and point it into a hard drive or, or a USB drive, or I'll take dev slash random and point it into uh, into my my target drive, and that will um, either write zeros or random characters into the uh, the block device. And last one, X mount. So now let's go back to uh, front here. So we had forensic all. Uh, let's see what it will add if we select it. So here's a few more things that Forensic All will add. Definitely, uh, we're going to say yes to this. Forensic Extras. And, you know, you can read everything that's being installed. You can see all the dependencies, all the uh, tools. And then if you just want everything, just select Forensic All and then you'll get everything. Let's apply here to be installed. Uh, let's see if I can make this list bigger. So 650 packages. Look at all these lists. So let's go and apply this. Uh, let me let let this run and install itself. And then uh, before I end this video, we're gonna we're gonna do one more modification to the system uh, where we're gonna have to disable auto mount. 
So as you see here in the screen, um, Wireshark is one of the tools that has to be installed. Uh, do you want no super users to be able to capture packets? I mean, it's up to you. You can configure this here the way you want it. Uh, there's going to be a few more tools that are going to pop up with some information that you have to configure. Uh, just follow the instructions there and then uh, you're going to be able to um, finish the installation. And then we're going to get into setting up the, um, the last thing, which is stop Automont. So all the tools have installed. Um, Keep in mind, not everything's gonna be in the menu here because a lot of them are command line, uh, you run from the terminal. Uh, so, you know, a few things might show up here like uh, G-Hex and some other ones, but most of the things are not installed. So, um, uh, another tool that I installed that I didn't mention, that I didn't mention was uh, uh, DD Rescue. I, I use it a lot, so this is also good to have in your system and probably VirtualBox if you do want some testing or, or um, uh, run other OS's or especially, especially if you want to run Windows inside your Linux, uh, definitely worth installing um, Windows if you're working on questionable material or, or explicit material. Uh, it's good to have virtual machines so then you can destroy it when you're done. I talked about this in my other video, so I will uh, end it uh, on that note when it comes to the uh, virtual machines. So, the last thing we have to install is Deconf Editor. So, Deconf Editor is going to allow us to make changes in the OS itself. Because uh, you can see now, I have a, I have a, I have a drive plugged in and it mounted right away. We don't, we don't want that happening because if we have a drive that came in, um, you don't want the drive to mount because you want to be able to image it uh, uh, with hashes and then, you know, uh, in forensic methodology, you want to be plugging in the evidence so it mounts. Uh, so then you, you are corrupting the evidence um, and its virgin state. So definitely you want to disable auto mount. I mean, if you can use a write blocker, please use a write blocker. This is not a write blocker solution. This is just like a, like a temporary solution if you don't have one. Uh, I've used it on cases and I did document it. And I did document it in, uh, in uh, my reports that I've used the, uh, this method of stopping uh, writing because I had, some, I had some drives that I couldn't plug into anything else. It didn't work through any white write blocker. So I had to use this method. So if you, if you document what you're doing and you explain your reasonings, uh, there should be no issues in court uh, at a later date. So let's unmount this USB. Gconfig is installed. You have to make changes in the system so the next time you plug in a drive, it doesn't mount it. So to get to it, uh, you need to go to the menu, type in Dconf editor, and there it is. And you got a warning because you can really screw up your system if you make changes that, uh, that are uh, important for the for the way the system works. So I don't don't make any crazy changes. Just do this one thing. And if you want to learn more about the converter, you can uh, go on Google and uh, read up on it. So you're gonna go to org, cinnamon, desktop, and then media handling. So here's where you want to disable auto mount, auto mount open. And I think that, that'll be it. That. <clears throat> This change enough will be enough for when you plug in the drive, it's not going to mount it. Let's close this. Let's see. I think you would need to reboot for, for this to work, but uh, let me plug in a drive anyway and see what happens. Yeah, as you can see, it tells you that the drive is here. So if you open disks, um, you can definitely see the drive here. It showed up, but it didn't, it didn't mount. It didn't prompt me to mount it. These are the changes that are needed. So anyway. That's it for this video. Uh, hopefully uh, you can install your own distribution this way. Like I said, you can choose whichever one you like. Um, this is only scratching the surface. I've only went back, went through some of the tools that I use. There's, uh, there's plenty more I can install that I haven't mentioned. This video is already crazy long, uh, so we can end it here. Maybe I'll make a part three, but I'm not sure yet. So if I do, then you'll definitely see it on the channel. It won't be next video. Next video, I have some other great videos coming up. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe into my Subscribe to my channel, um, your support definitely helps, and I'll see you in the next video.